So he's clearly not happy with his experience, right? It's zero out of four stars, and I understand it. If you go and you think the food is bad and you got overcharged for it, I don't think that results in an overall good impression of a space, especially if you also think that the service was bad. But I think that, you know, he is going to be critical of this kind of stuff because it's right up his alley of being in New York, being for the ultra wealthy and, you know, not being transparent about price. So it's no surprise to me that he ripped it apart in the way that he did. But I think what we should talk about a little bit while we're on the topic of Ryan Sutton is this literally just came out a few hours ago, and that's the the joy of me being able to do these off the cuff a little bit, is he wrote this article about per se. He wrote about his experience, uh, 10.40 a.m. Eastern Time today, and the article is, Is Per Se Good Again? Thomas Keller's Columbus Circle Tasting Menu under Chef Corey Chow has far more wins than in the past. And it talks about the annual revenue of Per Se. It talks about Corey Chow taking the helm as chef de cuisine. It talks about uh, Tack Room and how his, it's a, quote, Keller's extravagantly expensive Hudson Yard spot, end quote. Uh, I decided, he says, I decided it was worth swinging by for another meal. Quote, my chief takeaway is that Per Se appears to have straightened the ship, sort of, end quote which is interesting to hear. Uh, it talks about the good, a couple of uh, dishes of peas and carrots, uh, marmalade of spaghetti squash with XO sauce, uh, pastry chef Anna Bowles' work, which she's been doing amazing, amazing stuff with. Um, 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 what else does it talk about here? The, the, the clunkers it talks about, the dishes that didn't go so well. He says... Um, Quote, the shortfalls weren't so much the type of calculated, let's see if this works experiments one expects as an, in a long tasting. Instead, they were tired examples of classical cooking. Pan roasted monkfish with bacon tasted like virtually any other version of this dish at an everyday brasserie. Same goes for a ho hum grilled quail breast. Ocetra caviar, a $60 supplement, was a simply a simple study in aggressive, palate destroying salinity, thanks to a pairing with smoked trout riettes. Then it goes back into the good, and then, of course, in typical Ryan Sutton fashion, it talks about the price. And I thought this was an interesting point, because he attempts to do some math here on the supplements that Per Se does. So for everybody that isn't aware, the base per price for Per Se's tasting menu is $355. That is service included. That includes the nine-course chef's tasting. It also includes the desserts there as well. And it's interesting that he talks about it in that way because he says it is one of the country's few restaurants where dinner can hit a cool grand before wine, which I don't really understand, right? Because if you do the math on the tasting menu, which is $355, and then all the supplements, which goes $30, $60, $125, and then $100, the total of that comes to $670, So I don't understand where he's getting meal. If you get all the supplements, it can be $1,000 before you get wine. I mean, because even if you add tax to $670, it's not quite getting even close to $900. Um, But then, you know, he talks about how, you know, some of the other, some of these supplements at other tasting menu restaurants are included, right? And that's going back to that Joshua Skeen's uh, podcast episode. He talks about, well, you know, the reason the menu at Saison is so expensive is because we have caviar included. We have, you know, crab included. We have foie gras included on the menu, and we don't charge a supplement for it. That's why our base price is close to $500 when everybody else is down at $300, and then they supplement it on to your, to your cost. Uh, he says, quote, and since folks, this is from Ryan Sutton, he says, quote, and since folks often like to claim that the best dining is on par price-wise with the best theater, considering the following, if both patrons at a table for two order all of Per Se's more expensive winter supplements, they'd rack up a $1,600 bill, enough for a blowout meal at Le Bernardin, a good electric scooter, and a pair of tickets to see Hamilton. And I hate, I really, really dislike this well, you could get this dinner or you could get this, this, and this and a meal at McDonald's. I don't, I really, really don't like that. That's like saying, you know, well, you could get an iPhone or you could get a OnePlus 7 with, you know, XYZ camera and a lens and a blah, blah, blah. It's just, it's not productive conversation because you're not comparing apples to apples. And that's something that I really enjoyed that, uh, that, uh, Josh Skeens does in this interview is he says you're not comparing apples to apples but let's when we do compare apples to apples then it's a completely different conversation and I think that that's uh, important to talk about when we're talking about him 
discussing uh, math at, at, at per se. So I am happy to see that he is back on their good, like per se is back on his good side, especially when he does have this platform that, you know, puts out the information that it does. Um, I really, really have a different perspective now that I literally ate at per se last week. I Maybe I should just share that here. So I was at Columbus Circle. I really wanted to go have a cocktail at Aviary before I was going to eat uh, at Liberna Den, which I did shoot at this place called Episode About. Aviary didn't have any space, and so effectively I decided that, well, you know, I'm in Columbus Circle. I might as well go see what's happening at Per Se. Uh, it was the same night as their special legacy dinner. So for those of you that don't know, they one of the core values at the Thomas Keller Restaurant Group is legacy, and so one of the things that they wanted to do was bring chefs that have worked at Per Se in the past, have their own projects going on now, bring them back to Per Se, and do a dinner out of the private dining room. So one of these dinners was that night, and I had no intention of going and eating at that dinner because it was $500 plus dollars a person, and I would have been eating by myself, which would have been very awkward in a private dining room with people that I have never met before. And so I thought, you know, I could just go and sit at the salon. I could just go sit at the bar and, you know, order a drink, order oysters and pearls just for nostalgia's sake, and then go to dinner at La Berna Den. Uh... Come to find out that my old roommate, uh, Daniel, is maitre d' there now, and before I know it, Corey Chow's hand is on my shoulder, and we're catching up a little bit because he came to Norway with his family on a cruise, and I had the pleasure of cooking for Corey Chow uh, in Norway at Least for Kit. So before I know it, I'm like six courses deep, and I have all the desserts on my table, and there's a thing on my clipboard right now that says, on my pegboard, that says, your meal has been complimentary by Chef Corey Chow. I'm trying to make sure my eyes can read that. And yeah, so I got a free meal at Per Se, which was amazing, so shout out to everybody and their hospitality there. It was really, really incredible to experience. I can definitely attest to the fact that Corey is killing it, and he's doing a lot of really inspired riffs on the classics at Per Se. Like I had a, a instead of the salmon in the cornet, I had Kampachi. Um, instead of the Gougere, I had a cheese it with pimento cheese on the inside. So it's like two, um, Pat Brise kind of crackers. And then inside is a spicy pimento cheese. And that's the kind of cheese bite instead of the classic Gougere. Um, the foie course was amazing. Oysters and Pearls has a different caviar than when I worked there. There's just a lot of really incredible um, kind of alterations that he's made to kind of re-inspire and put his own signature on that chef de cuisine role because, you know, it, they're big shoes to fill and they're also clientele, like we're talking about, that come to per se year after year after year and they expect the same thing and to kind of stick to the guns while still re-inspiring it is not an easy task and I know that he's just he's killing it so Hubert's gonna eat there tonight I'm pretty sure my friend Hubert is in New York tonight he's eating at per se he's gonna do the full menu which I didn't experience I kind of had an abbreviated uh menu so I had most of the dishes that I wanted to eat along with a couple extras courtesy of the team there which is great um, but yeah, I can just I, I can attest to the fact that Corey Chow has breathed new life into per se, and I'm happy to see that it's being recognized in this way. I just wish that I just keep going back to this, right? Like it doesn't have to be about the price, man. And so the last kind of note that I have in this um you know, kind of note that I have about Ryan Sutton is that I want to interview Ryan Sutton. I want to sit down with him. I want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I want to ask him these questions about why do you think that prices are the way that they are in these restaurants? Do you think that they're trying to rip you off? Do you think that they're getting rich off this stuff? Do you think that they're, um, you know, driving Lamborghinis around in Dubai when you're sitting in their dining rooms and paying $160 for a tasting menu? Because it's often not the case. And I just want to kind of get a sense of where his mindset is at and why he is the way that he is in his writing and why his point of view is the way that it is. Because I don't think it's fair that I sit here on my podcast and talk shit about the way that he writes about food if I'm not going to also extend that invitation to him and say, you know, listen, man, I want to have a conversation to see where you're coming from. And if we disagree, we disagree. But I don't like when you're putting people down for all these wrong reasons. You know what I mean? And the point that I want to lead into with that, which comes from another woman who also has very similar experience to me, uh, put out a piece on Medium, and it's called Tack Room, Behind the Price Tag. And the author's name is Melissa Caputo. She is a 
employee for Thomas Keller at Per Se. And, um, you know, she's an author who's on my side with her hatred of Ryan Sutton. She says, quote, Ryan Sutton's recent review of The Tack Room made me more infuriated than I have been in my entire 31-year lifespan. I wasn't angry because I had just dined at The Tack Room two weeks ago. I truly thought it was delicious and a great addition not only to Hudson Yards, but to the New York dining scene in general. I wasn't angry because I know many of the extremely talented members of the Tack Room team who have been working extremely demanding schedules for the past five months. I wasn't angry because I work for Thomas Keller and felt offended by Sutton's continued distaste for all operations run by Chef Keller. I was infuriated because Ryan Sutton cries about the price of almost every item on the menu and does not realize what's going into those numbers. End quote. Which is an extremely better articulated way uh, to put it rather than how I've been, you know, spewing my thoughts. But, you know, she's been cooking in New York City for 11 years. Um, her experience working at Per Se uh, is has been amazing from her perspective. And she talks about how all the benefits that go along with paying your staff fair. She says, quote, a very fairly hourly rate, my beyond average health insurance options, which included my dental and vision packages, my new 401k, which could be matched by 3% by the company, as well as my paid vacation days. I could even opt in for pet insurance, end quote. And so basically what she's saying from that perspective is, you know, yes, you're paying a lot for a $355 tasting menu, but every single staff member, for the most part, gets paid a fair wage. And it's not a restaurant that's being run by 40 stagiaires. Yes, there might be some externs that are working for free or for less than, you know, normal pay, but that's part of their education, right? And I have another video that uh, Joe and I shot that's all about, you know, kind of my experience with my externship and the goals that I had and what... Um, I took out of that experience. So she also talks about sourcing the product, which also goes into the cost. She says, quote, Chef Keller is known for building relationships with farms that create an incredible product, and these farmers are able to do so because of how they treat the animals. This has been a consideration when analyzing the cost of the dish. Furthermore, the grill, perhaps the most comparable restaurant to Tack Room, has price points that are near identical to Chef Keller's, yet their menus give very little indication as to where their products are coming from, other than, quote unquote, American. So the the biggest point that I want to that I want to take from this is, you know, Ryan Sutton has his opinion and then the people who are actually working in these restaurants and have experience in writing menus and costing things have very different opinions on this stuff. And I just think that, you know, I've said it before on the show that it's the easiest criticism to have is well it should be cheaper. You could say that literally about anything. You know, point to the the rent on my apartment. It should be cheaper. The camera I'm shooting this on. It should be cheaper. This Apple laptop. It should be cheaper. The coffee you got this morning. It could be cheaper. And it's true. It could be cheaper. But then, to quote Thanos here, at what cost? Is it Thanos who says that? It's Gamora who says that. Baby Gamora says that. Anyways. Um, I just think the, the, the disclaimer that I have to say at the end of this whole thing and the mic drop at the end of this entire uh, conversation that she has is, quote, I am not speaking on behalf of the restaurant group at all. And with that said, I would like to add that I think Ryan Sutton's reviews feel more like a bargain price comparison tool, such as Expedia or Kayak, rather than a decent piece of writing about the food and the restaurants. I would be very surprised if any guest going to the tack room is going because they hope for a great cheap steak, the best deal in the city. But it seems like the price tag is still all Sutton can focus on for his reviews of Thomas Keller's restaurants. I thought I could offer some insight for his next Expedia style price comparison end quote. So that's still the kind of like the end of my, um, you know, thoughts on this is that I, I, I will continue to cover Ryan Sutton's writing because I think it's important that if you're the first person, uh, if you're new to the show and you haven't seen my stuff before, I think it's important to voice my continued criticism of his criticisms. But I, I wouldn't like for this to be a one-sided kind of conversation. I would love to sit down with Ryan. I would love to interview him and get kind of more of his thoughts because I, I, I don't think what he's doing for the industry is productive. I don't think what he's doing is respectful. I don't think what he's doing uh, accomplishes what he hopes to accomplish. I think that if anything, he is dissing, he's not encouraging people to become patrons of these restaurants, which then causes them to be more strapped for cash, which then causes them to do things that are not economically viable for sustainable business. And because of that, it's causing harm to the industry as a whole. And that's why I feel like I want to use this platform to kind of speak about these things. Because if we want 
our chefs to get paid more, if we want our staff to be happier and live more sustainably in their work, I think that we have like fin- finances have to come into play. And if you're going to constantly complain that things should be cheaper, it doesn't accomplish that. And so, um, yeah, I think that if we're going to um, talk about places ripping you off, then you should absolutely voice your concern because they told you it was going to be $168 and it comes to your table at 197 That's not okay. But if you're going to talk about, well, you know, I think that this, uh, you could go eat at per se or you can buy an electric scooter, it's not a really good argument. 